we're going to talk about some complex nodes. And for most people who, some of y'all who have C nodes, uh, you know, you may get into a kind of a quandary as to, you know, where do I go when I, when I write uh, certain types of notes. So we're going to do some, some work today. Uh, I'm going to try to write, get three or four notes uh, in that we can discuss. And if you have any questions, uh, let me know. I will try to uh, answer them. And we'll have a little uh, Q&A uh, as uh, when we finish. So um, let me go ahead and y'all can see my screen. Uh, let me move this over to the side. Scott, I'm going to leave your video, I mean, your audio on in case you want to say anything. We have, um, we have uh, Scott Hedrick with us tonight. Not, is, is Jorge going to join us? He is uh, logging in as we speak. He's got to okay. install a little thing. Well, Scott and Jorge are the two uh, primary lead soft writers and, and uh, software writers involved in creating C notes. And Scott is an expert into user experience and user interface. So, um, if y'all have any questions with regards to that or any comments, uh, he's the guy that makes it look like this. And, uh, and uh, Jorge, of course, is uh, kind of a mastermind when it comes to overall layout and, and how we get this implemented in, into this beautiful software that we have. Anyway, so as things become more complex, just remember that, you know, we, we are in charge of our solutions. And, um, of course, one of the big questions that we have uh, approach to us is how do we integrate with uh, with other practice management softwares, which are very important. But you know, there's a bigger picture with regards to C notes, and that is what it does for your practice. It's really a it's a it's a complete software package that is uh, can use as an addendum to your practice management software, no matter what kind it is. So, um, and you want to have a system in place that's going to allow you to actually move this data around, whether it's to a colleague, whether it's to insurance. Uh, and by the way, we have Tom Limley here, who is an insurance expert. And if you have any questions regarding that, uh, Tom has really uh, embraced uh, this product. And, and we thank you, Tom, for doing that. Uh, but as you know, as we get the, this, this digitization of dentistry, this information, how are we going to uh, move it around? And, and C Notes does provide an answer in some ways. We can move PDFs. Uh, to wherever we want, to insurance companies or to colleagues or to uh, patients. So, um, so when it comes to uh, complex note writing, it's kind of like one of the things that, that people have trouble with when they first start writing with C notes because it is a big software package, is that how do you get from one uh, idea to the next? How do you jump from that small pond to a bigger pond and, or integrate uh, multiple notes into, or multiple ideas into one note, rather. And that's what we call cognitive note generation. So we're going to cover a lot of that tonight. So let's go ahead and get started. I am going to uh, go ahead and share my uh, iPad. So if you bear with me just a moment, and we should have it on board. Let's go ahead and enter C notes. And we're going to write some notes today. We'll try to get four of them written, and we'll talk a little bit also about... Uh, Dropbox and how we utilize it and why it's so important how we utilize it and you should be too. So uh, let's go ahead and type in first. I'm going uh, to discuss several uh, complex uh, notes, but the first one is actually not that bad. It's just a matter of knowing where to go uh, when you write the notes. So the first one, these are all notes that were written this week uh, in my practice. And so we'll keep the date the same. Reason for visit. This is a re-cement Re-cement uh, 20 crown. And it's like, how do I write a note about that? It's actually very simple. So we'll go ahead and do that. We have a lot of capabilities here that you can go, but I'm gonna show you the most direct route. And that's gonna be cross though. We're gonna hit crown and tooth 20. We hit done. It isolates the crown treatment. And notice we're going to go all the way over to where it says maintenance. So we can hit maintenance, and what's our chief complaint? Well, patient reports that she's got a restorative uh, condition out what's out of her mouth. So hit save. Uh, next, we can render a diagnosis, do an examination, and we discover that uh, there is a debonded restoration. We could say we identified no fracture, et cetera. Uh, we could say insufficient retention, and maybe parafunctional. Uh, uh, bruxism and occlusal interferences. 
or reasons that it may have come out. Chair side adjustments. Well, we did an occlusal adjustment. We resubmitted the restoration, polished it, and educated the patient on what they shouldn't be doing. We'll go ahead and save. And you know it could be written as simply as that, and it could look this simple. If I go to review, you can see maintenance that was resubmitted. Uh, and so look what it took literally uh, less than a minute to do. Uh, if you want to be a little more complex, you could describe, well, what do we do as, as far as cementation? Where you can go is in, uh, not uh, triangle, let's go to placement, sorry. And restoration, we abraded it. We used uh, hydrofluoric etch and silane plus, and we hit save for the preparation. We cleaned it uh, with consepsis and water, and we also did a mechanical debridement to increase its bonding retention. And then we etched with dentin and enamel uh, etch, and uh, we used uh, multi-link AB as far as the uh, adhesive cementation, we use multi-link and we confirm the seating. We use the oxygen inhibitor layer and wave technique and we light cured it for about 35 seconds. And so we're done. We go to finish, we remove the excess, we adjusted the occlusion, we check the contacts and margins again. Everything looked good. You can see now we have a little more robust note. We go to conclusion. You can see now we have written a little bit more with regards to what, how, what kind of uh, adhesive cementation we did. Let's close this out and let's say we want to do a little bit more. Let's say we gave the patient post op instructions for crowns verbally. And next appointment, let's say, is for hygiene, periodic cleaning, treatment, let's say three weeks. Let's say. So we close that out, and then we can review the note. Now you have a little more robust note. It didn't take any uh, much more than a minute more to, to, uh, to write a more robust note. So you can see how simple it is. It can be as simple as just you know maintenance, what we did, the loot crown was loose, why, and we replaced it, and we re-cemented it. So let's go ahead, and we're going to take and move this to uh, Dropbox just by clicking the Dropbox icon. And we're going to save both text and PDF, so we'll press both, and then we'll close that out. You can see that it already has meant, went to our Dropbox account. So we'll go ahead and close this out. Next, what I'm going to do something a little more complex. This is a patient that's going to require cross-department, you know, construction of a note. So uh, this is Carolina, and we're going to. Um, what happened to her is young girl uh, that. We had a swimming accident, and we're going to say fractured uh, eight incisal edge. We're going to put swimming, and we're going to also say patient reports sensitivity. to touch and cold. So it gives us a little leadway as to what our examination should look like. So we're gonna hit done. And the first thing we're gonna do, when you don't know what is wrong with, with, a, with a particular case or isolated tooth, uh, we go to exams. So that's in the left-hand corner. And we're gonna hit exams. We're gonna isolate actually three teeth because it was in that general area where she got hit in the mouth. and. So we're going to put seven, eight, nine. I'm going to hit done. So we isolated these teeth. I'm going to hit exams. And we have the opportunity here. We're going to say that uh, we took an x-ray. So we're going to hit the x-ray button, hit teeth. We're going to isolate seven, eight, nine, and hit periapical, and then hit save. And then you can see how quickly it wrote the note. Then what we're going to do is we'll go to periodontics and say, well, let's check the pocketing, make sure there's no fractures anywhere. So we're going to say teeth 789. And we're going to mark in approximately distal buccal, distal lingual, mesial buccal, mesial lingual. Then we're capable of recording that they were all three millimeters. We hit save. So you can see the pocket 789, all in approximate, were three millimeters. And let's look at the buccal aspect. We can also mark 789. And we do buccal lingual, and our pocket depth 
is two. So all this is telling us that everything is okay. So next we can go to mobility and record that they all had a normal mobility of one. You can also, uh, if you want to record plaque calculus, you can, in this case we're not, we didn't. And we go to dental conditions. Well, the first thing we know about is that we have, uh, if we go to go through existing dental restorations, failing restorative conditions, underneath that you can see tooth related trauma. And we're gonna say that we have a fracture on tooth eight, and it's really incisal edge and hit commit. Once we hit commit, we hit done, and we can get out of that. Now we can go to endodontics. We took a, uh, well, we can describe our symptoms. If we hit symptoms first, well, our pain, well, we know that it's occasional and it's, uh, it's momentary and it started last night. Hit done. And we can uh, look at the location is localized to that particular tooth. It's provoked by cold and touching it. She touched it first. We we'll put mild to moderate intensity. As far as swelling, there was no swelling in the area, so we'll press that. And uh, we can do, we can go to radiographs now and discuss what we saw. Well, if we press the teeth again, we'll put seven, eight, and nine. We saw a widened PDL and hit save. And also on uh, we see uh, we put seven, eight, and nine again, and we put uh, uh, immature apex or something gorgeous now so we hit that again so we have immature apex and we don't see any in, uh, external internal resorption we don't see any bone loss of any kind we don't see any pathology so we can say you know that we have uh, no pathology present to the root endodontically and uh, previous procedures you know there are none so uh, at this stage we can go ahead and do a cold test and we're going to put seven and nine and record that it's normal Okay, then I'm gonna go to tooth eight and say our cold test is, uh, sorry, is moderate and it's safe. We can also do a heat test and we're gonna say seven, eight, and nine tested normal, it's safe. Now at this point, we have the opportunity to say at, at tooth number eight is we highlight it and that it was, we have a reversible pulpitis. So we know this tooth is gonna be okay. In the right hand corner where the diagnosis is uh, located. So next, we also did a translumination of the area and it was normal, okay. You can also reaffirm if you wanted to periodontal wise that seven, eight, nine was within normal limits. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close that out. So our examination's finished. So we render the diagnosis that the tooth's gonna to be okay, and we can put a restoration on there. So what kind of restoration? Well, let's go to operative up at the top, and we're gonna place a composite on tooth eight and hit done. So we're gonna enter exam. So we go to composite. We can record that this was done with no anesthesia. So I'm gonna to go to anesthesia and hit no anesthesia. Many times you can record the negative or the opposite. Um, preparation wise, we really didn't do much preparation, you know? So what I'm gonna put here is down at the bottom, refine. We refined the margins a little bit, just a little light sanding to smooth up some of the sharp edges. Uh, outline resistance and retention form for uh, bonded filling. So and we went ahead and cleaned it with uh, mechanical debridement and sepsis and water. We hit save, and now we're gonna close that out. And we're gonna technique. Uh, we used a mylar strip as a matrix, and we're gonna hit save as a back, uh, drop to creating our structure, or recreating our structures rather. And we didn't use liners, direct pulp or pins, but we did do a phosphoric acid edge, so we're gonna click on that. We did uh, dentin and enamel etching. We used a dentin bond bonding agent of adhese, and we, um, let me go back to adhese because we light cured it down here at the bottom, and we light cured it for about 20 seconds. Now let's go to placement. Now we didn't use a flowable composite, but we did use, we actually used four layers, four different colors in this instance. So I'm gonna show you, we only have the ability to talk about two layers, which is plenty really, but I'm gonna show you how you get around discussing multiple layers, like four layers, like what we did. 
and it basically comes down to shade. So we took uh, clear film majesty and our shade, we're gonna put, start out with Denton, Denton A2, and we record that. And we're gonna say that it was incrementally placed and that we like cured it for 25 seconds. Hit save. Now we're gonna to go to composite layer two and we're gonna use clear film majesty. And we're going to select our shade and use enamel A1 and hit done. You can see that that's recorded, incrementally placed. And we're going to like cure it for 25 seconds and hit save. So we have that done and let's close that out. Let's go to the finish. We remove the matrix. We removed, uh, we really didn't have much isolation except for a cotton roll, but I really didn't afford that. But you can say we re removed isolation. We uh, checked the contacts, checked the occlusion, adjusted the occlusion and polished it. Made it look really nice. And we go to conclusion, post-op instructions, basically for operative verbal restorations and to leave that particular alone for a little while. And a heel, we also wanted to see her, so I went to next appointment, didn't have to give her any anesthetic or anything. Uh, went to next appointment and uh, we're gonna place, uh, go to composite, eight, composite, and we're gonna follow up in one week. Make sure to just feel nice. So we'll close this up and we get to review the note. When you review the note, you can see that we have an examination. You can also see it as composite. It's really good for insurance purposes. And, uh, you know, you can send this off to the insurance company and you have a good uh, opportunity to get reimbursed better. So let's, um, if I go to edit in the upper right hand corner next to Dropbox, you can see it says swipe to left. Uh, I, so we're going to look at technique. I'm gonna swipe that and hit the edit button and it allows us to, uh, to edit what was said here. So now we, we can say, uh, let's see, we have clear film majesty, uh, shade A2, and I'm going to modify that and say, and A1, I should say A1 Denton. Our mammalons, and then it says was incrementally placed. Okay, now next we're going to go to enamel shade A1, and I'm going to put and white enamel over proximal developmental lobes. And you can see that we uh, have now created a nice recipe. We can end our editing. And we have a nice recipe for how this restoration was made. And you have a track up. So we end our editing. And you can see we're now finished with a nice robust note. And we're going to click the Dropbox button and send both. And you'll see, there you go that the text and the PDF were sent to Dropbox. So there's your clarification. We go ahead and uh, close that out. We can go to our next page. So you see how fast from a clinical aspect, you and your staff, you write the notes and you send them to Dropbox and you're done. You have uh, someone else, a designated person or a front office, uh, you know, they're, they're handling the, the practice management, uh, you know, aspect of it. Let them load it into your practice management software. So let's go ahead and we're going to write uh, another one. And another one's going to be another A. We do a lot of restore, anterior restorative work in our practice. So um, we're going to click JS. And what happened here was a post fracture. So we're going to say tooth eight. And we're going to say post fracture at gum line. Uh, period, and we're going to put uh, crown is intact. Crown is intact. 
You can also say, uh, if you want to, patient condition, patient in no pain. So hit done. So the main, main thing we want to make sure here is that the root canal and that the root complex is in good shape in order to, uh, we have all the faculties to put this back together. So let's go ahead first and go to exams because we don't, we have to examine it, and, uh, examine it and see what's going on. So we're gonna hit examination. We're gonna take an x-ray of course of this area. So first we're gonna go to exams and hit pre-op. We're gonna uh, select the teeth and say tooth eight and hit x-rays and periapical. And then, sorry, I didn't hit eight. So now we hit eight and then now we can hit save. And I'll go ahead and do that. Also, we can um, review our med history. I wanna say there's no changes in our medical history. By hitting the no delta sign, we'll close that out. We pre she normally pre-medicates, made sure she did with amoxicillin. So we can close that out now. So our pre-op's done. And uh, periodontics. So we're going to go ahead once again look at pocketing, make sure there's no fracture anywhere, and we're going to record the same thing as we did in the previous note, uh, where we look at all the interproximal areas, and if everything's normal, they should be about the same, and they all were for three millimeters. And for hit save, and for buccal lingual, we'll select our area, and for buccal lingual, we will put uh, one millimeter and hit save. So we'll go ahead and look at, uh, we're not gonna look at mobility or plaque or calculus for test gen, but it's all good. Let's go to, um, let's go to endodontics. And what do we see? Symptom wise, patients in no pain, so we don't have to record that. We can also record that there's no swelling in the area. Let's talk about our radiographs. So we're back in radiographs where uh, we can talk about the radiograph that we took and what are we seeing? Well, we see, uh, our tooth eight. So we press the teeth button, hit press eight. So we see a widened PDL, okay? And no external internal resorption. We don't see any bone loss. Uh, we don't see uh, any fractures of the root or anything like that. You, I mean, you could record that the tooth is fractured, but um, we're gonna say no pathology present, hit save. And now I'm gonna hit eight again because I'm gonna continue I'm going to see if there's a post there. So what we're going to do is actually try to retrieve as much of the post as we can by it's a um, it's a fiber post, so we're going to actually be able to retrieve it. So we don't have to worry about percussion or cold heat tests, uh, translumination. You can also confirm in perio probe that eight is within normal limits, just reconfirming what you wrote earlier, and no sinus tract, etc. So. Um, we can uh, we can go ahead and put as a diagnosis. We can put that it's okay, it's within normal limits, and that we can restore it. So next, let's go to prosthodontics because what we have here is a crown out, and you can, if you want to, go to maintenance like we did before. You can press maintenance. You can describe the chief complaint again. And you can say restorative out. You can say tooth fracture and diagnosis. We'll say restorative uh, tooth fracture and we'll say uh, debonded restoration, but insufficient retention. You can also put their parafunctional habits, et cetera. Uh, so our chair side adjustments essentially was re-cement restoration. But we're going to talk a little more. We're going to educate the patient. But we're going to talk a little bit more about it. So what we're going to do is go to posts now. And our post methods, we're going to press 8. And record that we have a fiber core post. Our new length is going to be 7. And we will next go to ready the, uh, ready the post. So I'm going to hit save. We hit ready the post where we did, uh, I'm sorry, we didn't do, uh, 
we did air abrasion, etch, silane, and next we're going to uh, ready the prep site where we cleaned it with uh, chlorhexidine rinse. We etched it and we conditioned it. We didn't light cure it. So next we did adhesive cementation with multi-link, oxygen inhibitor layer, we light cured for 0.5, it's safe. When we cleaned up, it's safe. Now if you want to, you can also talk about the fact that we placed the crown at the same time. So we're gonna do a placement, the restoration, we got it ready by air braiding, etching, silane, and then we got the the tooth, I mean the prep we already described. So we can go to straight to adhe adhesive cementation with multi-link. And we um, sorry. We confirmed seeding, applied our oxygen inhibitor layer and light cured for 30 seconds. It's safe. And we go ahead and finish. We remove the excess. We're adjusting the occlusion. Check the contacts and check the margins. Make sure everything's back together. And we can go to our conclusion page. And one thing we can do, I'm going to close conclusion real quick. Let's go to the little triangle next to it. And that is called unexpected incidences. So the only thing that I want to detail here is the fact that um, we're going to say the pre-existing post was retrievable. All right, right now. Was retrievable. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reiterate new post length is seven millimeters. Okay, so there we go. So we're going to hit close, and that helps us uh, just identify something a little out of the ordinary. It was the fact that this you know, fractured post in, in place. So we'll go back to the conclusion. Post-op instructions, well, we're gonna do it for fixed prosthodontics, and we're gonna have a verbal for crowns, and close that out. We're going to review our note. Actually, I'm gonna go I'll close that out a little ahead of schedule. Let's go to the next appointment, where I want to review this crown for adjustments in one week to make sure it's looking good, because we have to be careful with that tooth now, because it's a little more vulnerable than it was before. So we go to review our note, and you can see that um, we have a beautiful note written and kind of complex, the fact that it was something out of the ordinary. It was a post-fracture, and how do you deal with that? Well, and like I said, we went through exams, which is what you're going to do anyway. You go through the exams, and also you went to the crown, since it's a single-unit crown, and you can first talk about it in maintenance, where it's very easy because it's pre-existing. It's pre-existing condition, uh, you know, the um, restoration that you already placed. Uh, and then you're going to talk, go to posts, and then uh, crown placement. So you can see how well that note is written. So we will next go to uh, send this to both to Dropbox by pressing the Dropbox button and hitting both. And you can see that both text and PDF were uh, admitted to Dropbox. So we'll go ahead and close that out. And I'm going to do one more. And let's clear data. So clear data. We're going to talk about Chris. And what we have here is a, um, a we're going to place a temporary abutment and implant uh, crown for healing or soft tissue healing uh, uh, following uh, uncovering. So we're going to say here, we're going to put tooth number eight. I'm going to say soft tissue implant, uncovering, I should say soft tissue, molding by placing temporary implant abutment and crown. So there we go. So we hit done. And um, 
So let's go to prosthodontics. We we'll go to implant prosthodontics, single crown, implant single crown, tooth eight, hit done. And now we'll go to single implant crown. And what we're gonna do here is uh, let's go to anesthesia. So we're gonna mark our anesthesia topical. And we're gonna do local infiltration of septic cane, maybe three quarters of carpule, hit save. So we'll close that out. And next, uh, what we can do is discuss our, uh, let's go to in pre-op, also implant information. And if we go to implant guide, we're going to select the type of, since he was just released, make that capital, and do Megagen, and implant type, any ridge, Platform size is 4.0. Length of the implant is 10. And lot number, expiration date, reference, we don't have. We don't get the information from the, from the implant surgeon. So we're going to close that out. We're going to talk about the release form, which is very important. I think that the patient be released from the doctor. And the doctor's name is Dr. Nasser. And email type, I mean, release type is the email, release date, but it's 12. So we'll go ahead and hit out and we're gonna close that out. And let's go to straight to provisional. So we go to provisional and we're gonna put at the bottom, it says post second stage temp. So post second stage temp, save. And now we will go to, um, design and we're going to use a screw retain provisional titanium abutment with the crown red composite resin crown and the shade is going to be basic a1 um, let's go to finish where we're going to i'm sorry we're going to go to um, Finished, we're talking about floss occlusion and records. We're going to use uh, original impression and photos. Save, we'll close that out. And uh, if you want to, also, once that's created, we also took an impression. So, what we did was we, we removed the healing provisional and we did a implant level impression with a conventional closed tray. Material was VPS, and we use full arch. We also took uh, our finishing. We verified the impression, transferred copings, assembled the analog. We, we placed, well, we didn't place the cover caps, but we placed the healing abutment. And impression, took a bite registration, and opposing arch, and we're ready to go. Ready to make a beautiful crown. And uh, so there we go. We go to uh, conclusion. We can give post-appointment instructions for fixed pros, for verbal, for implant restorations. The patient has a nice, uh, sturdy environment in which he can chew again and feel comfortable. Next appointment is going to be for delivery. So we're going to go to next appointment, and we're going to hit eight. We're going to sit, uh, go down to implant single crown. I'm going to say delivery in two weeks and hit save. So now you can see the beautiful note that was written for modifying uh, us. The, the, the provisional uh, and implant site, uh, so we get nice tissue healing. So you can see how nice, oh, let me do one thing. I don't know why it didn't record on the particular tooth here, but we can put tooth eight. Let me go to you. All right, so we'll go to edit and go to send both and Dropbox, and you can see it's loaded also. So let's close this out and let's go to Dropbox real quick. I'm going to clear data. And what we're capable of doing, we're gonna close out Dropbox. I mean, close out CNotes, go to Dropbox. Now on your computer, you can see uh, what has been done here. If you go to files, <clears throat> you can see, uh, for example, uh, you know, we go to a text and you can see one of the notes that we wrote and how nice it looks in text. 
you want to take the same note and look at it in PDF, it's a little more elegant. So you have a couple of uh, opportunities here. And first of all, you have the opportunity to, uh, to send both text and PDF. And the way we do that is through box, Dropbox. And the reason is, is because if we go, I'm going to get out of here just for a moment. And, out, and notice it says in the upper left-hand corner, it says Sukasa. What you're capable of doing is, I'm going to get out of uh, Dropbox just for a moment. Let me get to do this again. There you go. We're going to get back into C notes. In the upper right-hand corner is this little gear cog. And if you see that, that's the settings page and allows you, or it says sharing services. If we press authorize Dropbox, it will find your Dropbox account if you have one, if it, <clears throat> if it is the same email address as your, that you use for your C notes. If not, you see at the bottom, it says use a different account. You can connect a different Dropbox account to your C notes account. And we wrote the API to allow this to happen. And what it allows us to do is I'm gonna cancel that just so you don't have to see it and let's close our settings button and I'm going to go back into Dropbox because now your Dropbox will be on every computer in your office and what you're capable of doing is taking <clears throat> uh, the reason why we send text and PDF is the, the text version what you're capable of doing is just copy you, you select it all you copy and paste it right into your patient's treatment notes it's that simple but this elegant PDF it's like an image. It can't be placed into your treatment notes folder because your practice software doesn't allow it <clears throat> because it's just a simple uh, spot or text field, rather. So it doesn't allow the capturing of images. So what you're capable of doing is taking uh, and placing the PDF into your attachments folder where you can, in some practice management software, you tag the PDF as a treatment note or you can uh, you can create in some practice management softwares, you can actually create a, a PDF, I'm sorry, not a PDF folder, but a treatment notes folder for the, for, for the patient. And uh, for when you have a, selected, a patient selected, they'll have a treatment notes folder. You can drop these PDFs right in there and you can actually view them if you want, whenever you want. But the beautiful thing about a PDF uh, note is that it can be encrypted. So now you can send this to, uh, along with your, uh, with your treatment codes for insurance, or it increases insurance reimbursement, and because you can't send it in uh, text because it's not encrypted. So you, unless you have an encrypted method of sending the text, you can do that, uh, which is fine if you have a way of doing that. But the, the beautiful thing about the PDF is you can actually see uh, the, the elegance with which it's written as opposed to text. So that's the beauty of it. So uh, the way we do we get away with that is a company called Sukasa costs $100 a year, which is nothing, $10 a month to have HIPAA compliant uh, uh, an encrypted folder. And the folder that we create is called the CNotes app folder. And we actually take that CNotes app folder and we're gonna physically drag it into Sukasa. You can see the Sukasa folder down there. So we take that, once it gets dragged into the Sukasa folder, it stays there permanently. So it's one thing you have, you only have to do it once in Dropbox and it applies to all your computers. So. In Sukasa, you can see you go to the apps folder and there's your CNotes app and there's all your uh, 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 notes that you wrote in it. So you're capable of, of writing these notes. You can keep them. You can get rid of uh, them once you're finished, placing them in your practice management software. So there's a lot of things you can do. So anyway, uh, that's all we have for tonight. And I uh, appreciate, appreciate you guys coming. We have a short Q&A after, but um, we'll see you soon in our CNotes uh, master training classes. See you then.